So I was taking a look through the retired fighters or fighters that didn't get their uh, contracts renewed. And I saw an older gentleman that uh, has been a mainstay at heavyweight for quite some time. And his name is Alexi Olenek. So he's a four-star fighter. Does business deals with uh, selling beef and whatnot with my uncle. So it's actually pretty cool that I get to do a showcase for him. Case in point, if you want to make Alexei Olenek work in this game, you need to implement the clinch. You need to implement short uh, short combinations in boxing. You don't want to see too many extended combinations in boxing. I can see his clinch strike and clinch control is pretty good. Health stats are not all there. It's closer to uh, what I would say his UFC prime is. Obviously, not uh, he doesn't have 89 hand speed right now. <laughs> he's, he's pretty good. He has some pretty wild submissions under his belt. Although it is, I did notice it is harder to sub opponents from certain positions if they have a you know another solid heavyweight behind beside them. But he has a really good lead hook and a really good lead body hook if I do remember correctly. But he's been fighting for God knows how long. I think that uh, since like before I was born, I think he started like in 1996. So kicks is exactly not exactly his forte. But very, very solid grappler. I think most of his wins, out of his like 60 wins, he gets like 47 by submission, 8 by knockout, a couple by decision. Uh, but a lot of his losses were by knockout. And he had a, uh, you know, he fought October 1st. I think that was his last fight against Ilir Latifi. He hasn't fought since then. That was his last fight on his contract. So, and I don't think he's getting it back. I think that was a decent fight to leave off on. Before that, he had a nice scarf hold choke submission, which is his last win. So, I'm going to call him effectively retired, and we're going to showcase Alexi, the boa constrictor, Olenek, on rank championships. Let's go have some fun. Alrighty, alrighty. This is going to be fun. Very, very fun. <laughs> Alexander Gustafson in heavyweight. He's uh, I'm sure I skip that. I'll have to cover that later. But Alexander Gustafson is very fleet-footed, so not exactly my best matchup. So we're gonna have to clinch. Now, one thing that you can do with Alexi, aside from, you wanna be smart with your clinch entries because of his ah. Okay, lunge your front kick. We're gonna keep a mental note of that. You wanna be smart with the clinch entries because one ill-timed. Clinch entry and a time an uppercut or a nice straight. That's a takedown. And it can lead to you getting robbed. But it doesn't matter. We got the fight to the floor exactly where we want it to be. We're going to switch over to backside. You can threaten the bulldog choke from this position. A couple of posture ups. Threaten the back take. I like to fake when I go for the back take. For if they try to roll, I can get a contextual transition that can lead me to at least getting half guard. But this guy's not being too active. A lot of people aren't really time aware of the time. So backside is a position that if you stay there a lot doing nothing, sure, you can mitigate damage. But the ref timer can go up to a minute and 20. And it can get reset pretty easily if they get a posture. So not a position you, you want to hang out and potentially lose the round in unless you're really confident about getting a 10-8 later. But so far, doing a good job getting control. Okay, flatten him out. Ugh, got the denial. I missed it. I missed time that. I tried to pre-deny uh, I pre-deny the other way. That's another thing you gotta be really careful about when you're going on the ground. If you try to pre-deny, that's a missed transition opportunity. And your opponent has about a second to go for like a free transition. So you could end up giving up back sitting if you try to, you know, pre-deny the full guard and they fake and they hit an undeniable fake there. You're not gonna give up too much. But if they hit a real fake and you miss that and you try to preemptively deny it, it'll cost you. So, yeah. But so far, so good. We got a, we're getting a decent amount of control time. Alexei Olenek really loves the arm triangle choke. He also, I think he's the only fighter to have two Ezekiel chokes in the UFC. Also has a couple of arm bars, a couple of neck cranks. Just a vicious, vicious grappler. Towards the end of his career, though, his uh, takedown entries were never exactly that great. It'd always be uh, trying to more so pull guard, very similar to Paul Craig actually. Right, they're just looking to make a collision of impact happen so they can start some sticky uh, grappling situation. And the earlier this man gets you on the ground, the more fucked you are. I'm serious. This man has ridiculous strength when it comes to his grappling. All right, hey, hey. You pre that one. He's gonna get up? Nope. He's gonna stay down on the ground. I mean, this is a great position. You don't want to get up from side saddle. Side control, okay, you can, whatever. But we're gonna go for the rolling knee bar. 
And that's another thing. He can threaten from subs for every, from everywhere. And if you have a fighter that has a lot of subs like Winnick, Ortega, Oliveira, a lot of those dudes, depending on the submission, if you're conscious of the time, you're getting control time when you're attacking your opponent with a submission. So I want you guys to consider this for a quick moment. If you take somebody down, right, you take somebody down, you get like a 45 or a minute control in a sp uh, specific position, you go for a submission, right, that doesn't compromise your position. Like say you go to the arm triangle and you get to the fourth stage of it and you're able to pass the side control off of the arm triangle, which is something I like to do. You're just getting more control time, you're getting scoring a lot more points submission wise and you're just slowly having to put your opponent in a... In a state of where they're gonna have to start rushing transitions and that's what i'm looking to try and do right now on the feet i don't want to box too much with this uh gustafson he's just a lot faster but we'll have to be aware of that uh, lunging front kick that lunging front kick is annoying a lot of people starting to do it i don't there's like a weird issue with it before you could lunge it regularly but sometimes it tracks i think marshall mind was one of the first guys to uh, realize that there was something wrong with it so people like to throw that, ay ay ay, that lunging front kick a lot. But the side step works very, very well. You have to, it's just a lot stricter timing. You need to take down? Yes, you do. So keep that in mind. This guys doing like the lunging front kick, don't even try to, if you already didn't time it ahead of time, ay ay, he's getting up. Don't even try to do the major lunge, just try to go for the side step. Oh, ho oh, oh. ho. Uh oh. Let's roll here. Let's get the fuck out. Fight the top hand and... Ah, couldn't deny that. Motherfucker took me down just to not grapple. Mm. He's throwing the hook instead of the uppercut counter. Ay, ay, ay. There is a night and day difference between Alexander Gustafson's speed versus Olenek. You can feel it. As long as we have good timing, ay, ay. We can make it work. We can make it work. Alright. There's only one other player that I recall that uses uh, Alexi Olenek. Oh, ho, ho, we caught him with the clinch hook. Hey, hey. Beautiful. There we go. I figure you're going to try that London front kick again. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. That freaking accuracy on Gustafson, too. Hey, there's one guy. That used Alexi Olenek a lot in UFC 3. That man was Papa Doc 60. He was terrifying. <laughs> we got a big punch. He was terrifying with Alexi Olenek because Papa Doc would hit this. Nope, side step. Ha <laughs> ha! Yes, drop him. Papa Doc would hit this. Whoa! Okay, we got him out. We got him out. He would hit this uh, side step to dodge a strike or something, right? And GA mattered a lot for takedown entries, especially in UFC 3. He would side step and hit you with a low single. Holy fucking shit, that shit was the most annoying thing. He do that shit with Khabib too. So Alexi had these crazy subs, and if y'all remember the sub system in UFC 3, you did not want Alexi to get off damage and crucifix side side, or you, you were in some deep shit, especially with how negative GA worked. But in this case, we got the sidestep, no grappling needed. Off of the sidestep, we got the knockdown, and we got the subsequent ground and pound finish against Alexander Gustafson so not bad for a first fight I would have liked to you know, shoot a little bit more get, get a submission win instead of a knockout win but pretty good pretty uh, pretty solid so far so let me see how much time is left oh we got plenty of time we got plenty of time so I'm gonna do two more one or two more fights with Alexi Olenek and rank championships just to give uh, respect to the OG this is a fight I would definitely like to see both in their prime. Mr. Cain Velasquez. I, I got, damn it, I missed the skip intro again. I'm going to cover that. <laughs> Mr. Cain Velasquez versus Alexi Lenny. Okay. Ah. Oh, no. For fuck's sake. Oh, for, oh, my God. No, no, no. This is a horrible start. That's where that goddamn accuracy stat fucks us over. Come on, we're taking your ass. I pressed that one. No, relax. Sir, relax. This is not how we wanted to start this. Let's shoot again. Oi, oi, oi. 
That was a horrible start. I was going to say, oh, look, forward moving one twos. We're going to slip into over under. But that accuracy stat. Ay, ay, ay. I guess it might have been Kane's accuracy stat or my accuracy stat. But that should have. I should have got the over under. This is why we need a manual over under input. As long as we get more options from there. I'm not a fan of it always going to the body lock straight from the over under. I've said this in my everything wrong with UFC 4 video. If you guys haven't seen that, definitely go check that out. Because I like to uh, make my criticisms with fact and not just off of uh, emotion. But I was, I was much more of a fan of... Uh, oh, what is this? Don't quit. Oh, no, no. Oh, you cheeky bastard. <laughs> you forced me. He forced me to get into a deeper stage. But that might have costed you. No, no, no. It's not going to cost you. We're going to end up giving up a uh, position. It's okay. It's okay. I'm confident. He ain't tapping out tonight, but he will tap out soon. We can hit him with the flipper Rooney. There we go. So, UFC 3 did one thing really well, and it was just the amount of options they had in the clinch. The real issue was the way the grapple would manage work, the negative GA, especially in tight clinch was busted as hell. Just a lot of things were kind of fucked. I know the two stage from the back clinch with Brian Ortega, oh my lord. Just a lot of horrible stuff in the clinching UFC 3, but the options were definitely a lot better for both the defensive and offensive fighter. Usually though, if you came across two players and they knew the animations and the uh, denials that would deny two things at once, then you'd usually get a stalemate. And whoever got the tie clean was, more, was uh, more likely to kind of fuck you up. Case in point, you didn't even have to be a... You could be a subpar player, but if you knew how to hit the tie clinch, Denials, bro, you would wreck people. Can't get the chain from there. Hey, I should have gone with the lead hook. True Alexi striking style. Well, he continues to do a nice job. Aye, yay, accuracy stat. Raising the guard and really frustrating the offensive fighter a little bit. Lesson one in box class, hands up, chin down. Should slip into OE there. Move along. Yeah, well, we'll be all right. Classic overhand combo. Yo, attack the body. Alright, alright. That was good. Yeah, I like the uc 3s clinch. It's just the options for both the defensive and offensive fighter. Here in UC4, we're asked the clinch entry thing. In theory, is a good good idea. You know, you don't really deny clinch attempt. You kind of have to work your way out of it. You know, walk out. But, you see, yeah, right here, it would be nice for him to be able to re-pummel from that tie clinch. Into an over under position. Oh my god, that almost hit me. I gotta I keep going with the cross because that's a habit of mine. I hit the ducking cross a lot with Aldo. Should be going for the ducking overhand. Ooh. Nice use of the retreat. Yeah, let's get some clinch uppercuts. Mm-hmm. Well, showing no signs of slowing there we down. go. Oh, ho, ho. Cheeky, cheeky. I like that. Very good. Very good. I like I like you mixing in mixing the martial arts, as they say. Oh, oh. <laughs> you, you cheeky guy. You're a cheeky guy. You're very petty. You're going to take me down, eh? Okay, I'll give you what you want. Yeah. Oh, my God. I pressed start. Bro? No. Oh, no, nah. He's going to side control. Damn. Oh, no. I forget Kane has a Kimura. I just. <laughs> that shit off reaction. We were fucked. Okay. We're safe, safe here. Oh, my lord. Oh, lord, no. No, 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 no. Kane has some high ass ground. Armbar, bro, why would you go for the armbar? Oh, wait, hold on. Okay, that's cheeky, but the ground and pound is okay. If you're getting the Niles in top mount and you have a guy that has level three and four ground and pound strikes, don't go for the fucking sub. Go for the ground and pound. You're gonna get a lot more bleed through damage. You're gonna get a lot more dam just damage in general from the mount position, and you have the chance to finish the guy. Well, he's he's opting to go the control route. Can't blame him. Damn, he denied the only knee bar too. Okay. 
Oh! Oh! Fuck! Bro, I thought I didn't that shit. Come on. Come on, submission defense that. Ay, ay, ay. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I know my my stroke to stand when it's so goddamn low, but thankfully he's not like Rennie or something with the shits with the chokes. Oh yeah, yeah. Wait, wait. Okay. Yeah, that was uh anybody with better choke subs, my ass is getting submitted. Oh my lord. Nah, nah, we can't take damage. I'm okay with I'm okay with getting denied. I'm okay with getting denied. I do not care about getting denied inside control if there's 40 seconds left. I am more than happy to take to just avoid taking damage because that's gonna score more. Then um, you can go for a sub. It's not gonna matter too much to me. But pro tip: if you want to survive around and not give up damage, if you have 40 seconds left and your submission defense is solid, go for the bail. Yes, and we got to take down. And you got good uh, submission defense. Let's transition and just don't take the damage. Motherfucker denied the back take. Yes! Chain that son of a bitch together. We got some. Oh, yeah, in the chain grappling. This is a very complete showcase. I thought I didn't hide that. It's alright, we're gonna go for the armbar. Because I know your stamina had to be low. Stamina had to be low. Can I deny that? Who had to deny that? The, the, the backpack. Ah, uh -huh. oh boy, oh boy! One of the fucking grapple it. Uh oh, uh oh! Oh yeah, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. Not the hell either. Yeah, we're getting an extension. We're getting an extension, and that's it. Yo, that's a uh, god. That's a beautiful sequence too. Damn right, that was beautifully executed. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Anik. Very, very good. Just chaining the backpack. The, when the, the backpack gets denied, if your fighter has access to, I think, level 3 trips or whatnot, you're going to be able to chain a lot easier. We hit that broomstick takedown right into back sitting. Got a road into full guard. But remember, if your opponent is transitioning, they also use up short term stamina. And the arm bar is actually a really good contextual transition that works. When your opponent turns into you into your so full guard your off of the back sitting transition. So a little bit of a pro tip for you right there. That's a nice submission victory we got. Oh, my back. God damn. Oh yeah. We got enough time for one more. Here we go, chill for a bit. And then uh right, yeah, do Cerrone. Go get J. Yes. Oh, uh, uh, I don't know if you're serious there. I don't know if you pointed and meant it, but I'll take the respect. Mm. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Ooh, -wee. all right. Let me tell y'all something about JDS. One, JDS. I slow this motherfucker down. Oh no. JDS has some of the cleanest boxing in the heavyweight division. He has a I I level. I think he's like a level four body jab, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe level three, or level four. A lot of good mix-ups, this guy. Ooh, and he's clinching me back. All right. We're going to have ourselves an MMA bout. Do some of these level 3 clinch needs to good use. I'm not going to outbox JDS, especially a fresh one. Ooh, and this guy's doing some sneaky shit. I don't know y'all see this, but he is sidestepping the fuck out of when he throws these goddamn combinations. I recognize the cycle strikes that he's throwing, but he's doing a really good job of timing it. So we need to... And he's clinching us, too. Go. We shoot. Oh, he still stops the takedown despite getting rocked. We're in for a fight. This is not going to go like the other two, huh? Okay, so the hard thing is going to be trying to get this guy down to the ground. He's doing a really good job with his footwork. See, he's moving. He's not just going forward and backwards. He's also moving laterally pretty well. Makes it more difficult for uh, Olenek to strike because he's a lot slower than JDS. Oof. Nice, com nice combination. Good timing. 
And he did the single oh, under reverse again. Yo, this guy's good. This guy's good. Oh, nice yeah, I'm not sit up. It's a five round fight too. The world across all combat sports. The way mm -hmm. that it just comes out, it's beautiful. It's a bail. It's a good ice now. The elbows tucked to the ribs. The jab. No, I'm killing the upper. Fuck. Right you got to clear that way too fast. Picture perfect technique. Almost like a title. One thing I like to do to set up the takedowns against the cage because um, the hip toss is very easy to deny initially. It's good to try to sneak in the clinch uppercuts instead of the clinch knees because they usually result in an auto break if they get the, the um, you know, if they, you know, they do the thing. Oh, we got to rock. Oh, you slipped it, you motherfucker. He's circling with the jab, too. Notice that he's circling with the freaking jab, the body jab, to my rear leg side. So if I throw, I mean, you guys just saw it. I just missed with that cross. Because the body jab has some invasive properties. And you see he's angling off with the body jab. Not a lot of players use, do that. I was talking about this in my Pereira showcase, right? There's a difference between moving your feet and using your feet. This also applies to your strikes. And one thing that I've seen meta-wise that the community is getting a lot better at is using the lateral angled strikes. You know, you don't always have to fight on the same straight line. Oh, nice. Oh, I saw that. I saw that. I saw that. No. Oh, fuck. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't know. We might take it. We might take it out. And he slices the fucking jab. Okay. We gotta, we gotta go for timing. He is too goddamn fast to box with. We got to try to make him over respond on certain things and just look to intercept him because we cannot stay in these exchanges boxing wise and look to get our clinches off too. This is tough. There we go. That's what I was saying. Like, a lot of the community have been using more of the angle strikes I've seen. I've been doing them for a while. Side sidestepping again. All right, so he's landed some good shots tonight. Good hooks. This is not a combo meal, right? No three piece, no so But a lot of the strikes you can cut the cage off a lot better if you angle off with more strikes. The guys who have uh, access to my members videos and know uh certain things about angled strikes that I do pretty well and they've taken into their own game. And now we can clinch. Damn, stops the takedown this time. We're gonna have to stick only striking from the clinch until we're gonna have to strike a little bit more to condition him to block high. But yeah, those uh, angle strikes are very cheeky, but that's a great use of the body jab. You circle in that direction. Oh, we, we can't strike back. We're still hard. We're still fucking hard rocked. No, move your goddamn head. Can't block high. Just, just a little bit off of the timing. Where they're supposed to be, and if you do that, most times this motherfucker making it work. Go. No. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I know the bleed through hooks. All right, we gotta chill. We gotta chill. Oh <laughs> no, 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 no. I feel it in my controller too. Oh, hold on. <clears throat> mm, God damn. Oh, just out of range. Jesus. <laughs> feeling in my controller and then I get get all stuffy oh the beating the snot <laughs> beating the snot out of my head no god fucking damn it he threw a hook I thought he was gonna go with the straight you smart no there we go there we go can we go yes bleed through damage alright at least that stops that from being a 10-8 round then you should retreat ay 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 that was a bad respect. Respect that. That's that was a well done round by you, Mr. JDS. Horrible round for us, but we got a knockdown back at the very right, least. Huh? Okay, respect. First round was kind of close, but we got to change the tempo of this fight because he got two knockdowns. We got it back, but 
We cannot. I'm pretty sure JDS house stats are a lot better than Linux. So we gotta try to freeze this guy. Mm hmm. There we go. Counter uppercut with a Linux. He likes to use that dipping uppercut against uh, Overy. That fight. Yeah, if y'all haven't seen that fight, there we go. Check hook. And we spear. Woohoo! We were having such a hard time getting him down. The spear was our best, <laughs> our best option. Of course, for those of you who don't know how to hit the spear, if you rock your opponent, you'll get any type of like, you know, stun or you have a 50% short-term stamina advantage. You input the double leg takedown. The only way they'll stop it, they have to sprawl against it. And they usually have to be pre-denied too. So one thing I want to do is I want to condition this guy to have a certain reaction to specific entries that I'm because I'm having a hard I oh fuck. <laughs> uh, okay. I'm having a hard time getting him to You cannot allow him Okay. I'm gonna just chill down here. Let me chill down here while I talk. I'm having a hard time getting this guy to fall for a clinch takedown. He's okay with taking a little bit of damage just to block. And the other issue is when I'm trying to shoot these regular takedowns, he's getting me into the tie single under, which allows him to have the opportunity to land some clinch knees, clinch break uppercuts. It's just not a good thing. He's not going to jump in my guard because he knows Atlantic has a guard that's very uh, not to be fucked with. And he's doing a great job of changing up whether the third or fourth strike is going to be a round strike, but we got him there. Check hook. Lands because of the stamina, his short-term stamina was though he missed two of those strikes, so we were able to intercept him. So at least we managed to get a rock. So much better round for us. Ay, 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 coño! Holy crap! Huh. I know his shot. Yes! Yes! Ay, yay. Okay, we gotta take. We gotta. That takedown is so fucking hard to get. <laughs> it's so easy to deny. Like, you have such a long time to deny it. But I think because I bailed earlier, he was kind of already expecting me to go for like, the back take, so he wasn't expecting that inside trip. So, good takedown. Let me just show. Nope. Oh. Jesus. Wait, we got a rock. Yeah, we got the knockdown too, right? We got a knockdown? No, no, I don't recall if I got a knockdown, but we got more rocks in him this round. Despite. Oh, hey, hey. Making me feel like I'm doing an ESFL fight. Respect my gear. No, no, no I was, this is a fun ass fight, though. It's a very fun fight. It's just as, as clean as it can get. Nothing seems uh, forced. Nothing seems real egregious. It's not any, uh, as the players will say, gesso, any cheese. You can not allow him to work on our guard, though. Because that bleed through damage. He dropped us because of the bleed through damage from the hook, so we can't allow him to keep building. So we have to fire off offense. Very close on the strikes line, too. Nice punch by Dosan. There we go, popped him off. Spear again. So he's okay with getting taken down, it seems, after getting rocked. I'll see if I can attack the head. Go for the sub. I'm sure he was expecting me to go for a fake, which is why he kind of just let it go. That's another thing. A lot of what I can do, what's working well for Linux, is conditioning them to block when I want where I want them to block based on my grappling attempts. So earlier in this fight, I was faking a lot to the arm triangle side when I did manage to get him down, or just faking in general. And what kind of throws players off, what you're supposed to do, if you know it's a fake, so you don't run the chance of giving them up GA, you kind of just let the fake happen. They're not going to build GA off of a fake unless you bite on it and you miss time right now. In this case, I kind of use that against him to get into that arm triangle so you can score some good control time. It's about 2 minutes and 20 back in the full guard. So in full guard, we don't get too much control time. So I don't like to be here for too long. But there's a submission we have for me. Got that. Let's wait a second. Got it. Yeah, he wasn't expecting that. This is going to score for us pretty well. 
Not enough time, though. I don't, mm, I don't want to give him top position, so I should probably cancel. Yeah, probably cancel. There's just too much at risk with having JDS getting a posture up position or a mount position. Just not ideal to get flipped over. Oh, fuck. <laughs> no, bro. I should have. I should have went. I should have went. Mm, come on, let's get forward. Got it. We didn't throw up a good sub attempt. Stuff it up. Okay. Now trying to hit escape. Good amount of escape, but we pretty much dominated this. One. Not dominated, but I think we. Have a, enough of an edge striking wise, and we're doing a good job attacking offensively off of our back. That I think this will help sway the surround in our favor too. Close fight, close, very close fight though, very close. All right, let's get to the while for that animation to finish. The rounds done. Oh yeah, yay! Yo, this J <laughs> yo respect my G. This is a fun fight. This is really really fun. Yeah, we're going for the Kimura. Oh, Try to keep here. the leg over. This is a very, very fun fight. Round five. Yo, I did not. We got good damage. Wow, I just hope that. Now, if he's smart, I'm going to give you the ultimate respect now. Thank you, sir. If he's smart. Ooh, nice. I wonder if he's going to make a read on that uh, check hook counter. If he's smart, he should start clinching me again. Because uh, uh. if he starts clinching me again, there's a good chance he can land something devastating. I know he's not going to try to take me down. I mean, he could. Rock him. Yeah, that's a good start. But he can land something devastating from the clinch because it is JDS. I don't remember what his clinch upper is. And I know his health isn't... Well, our health should be pretty similar. Though. His head does not look this banged up. Okay. God! Fucking... Damn it, he landed off the clinch break. Oh, shoot! Shoot you! Oh, man! We gotta clinch him. Just turn him. Yes! Okay, he didn't deny it. I was kind of like, yes, and I'm like, wait, he could have denied that. Alright, we got three minutes. We're rock for rock right now. We'll see... He chooses to proceed. <laughs> we we got to be a, a wet blanket. <laughs> three minutes. He landed that uppercut just as we were exiting the clinch. And we were the ones that initiated that clinch too. That's interesting. Alright, into mount. Let's go for the sub. He's got to kill some time. This is as, a, as a Alexi Olenek as a fight can get. That fight against Alistair Overeem where he was just going crazy with the combos was such an interesting fight. It reminded me of uh, how if you don't do if you do something that you don't usually do, you tend to get more tired. So I remember when uh, Damian Maia was fighting Kobe and he was striking. I think he won the first round of two of the judges' scorecards. I, I was just watching that. I was like, God damn, Maia really striking. But he was so tired by round two and three because it's just something that he wasn't accustomed to doing over that duration of time against somebody who can strike pretty well. And probably wasn't expecting it either. Alright, we're gonna take the pass. We're gonna deny we can try to go for the stack guard knee bar. Yes. Let's go for the stack guard knee bar. God, I went the wrong way. I went to go the wrong way. Force that. It's okay, it's okay. We got 56 seconds left. Yeah, that fight against Alistair over him. <laughs> he's just going crazy with the combos and he's tired out. Ended up losing. He could have definitely uh, taken that fight with a more of a grappling heavy approach, so I don't see why he didn't. Three seconds left. Jeez. This guy made me work for this one. He's making me work. And I can still get. I don't know how they scored that first round. I'm pretty confident about these last three. And we stopped them from getting a 10 8 in the second because we got our own knockdown. Still don't notice that. Postures up. Mm, Alright. To the judges we go. Respect. That was fun. That is that was actually a lot of fun. Right, regardless of what happens, we're really showing his clinch knees and shit. Alright, regardless of that, whatever happens. 
Well, uh, this will be the last fight. I, I like this fight a lot. And then we can probably get to getting a, I'm take a little bit of a break and then get to the Cerrone showcase. And I, I still got to do Tyler Santos, right? I got to do Tyler Santos. So we'll see. We'll see. Okay. The show. Okay. The show is a takedown around three. This is the sub attempt round four. Okay. So I might be right. I think I might have taken the final three. We'll see how the but regardless, this is going to be it for Alexio Lenick. Uh, we had a lot of fun with the showcase. Let's listen now to what the judges say. Oh, I know that animation. All three judges for the contest. 49 46. All right. All right. Yeah, we got the decision. All right. Well, hopefully you guys enjoyed that. This was, this went a lot longer than I expected. But hey, what can you do? Mary 17. I appreciate all of you. Much love. Until next time. Bye. -bye.